So as part of my uh, investigation as to why this bike's not starting the A65 Spitfire, I'm going to first of all check the valve timing and uh, then move on from there. So first thing to do is to whip the spark plugs out. <coughs> Taking the spark plugs out um, helps relieve the compression. Well, there's no compression once the spark plugs are out, and it enables you to turn the engine so you can get top dead or where the valves are fully open. Now to my mind, just in the visual check, those gaps look pretty tight. So I'll check that when I put the new ones in. That spark plug has definitely got a wider gap on it, so that's something I didn't check for. Now getting this uh, cover off um, is pretty straightforward except that the socket that fits on these four outer ones on this particular bike and I guess might have been replaced because these studs and nut arrangement have been replaced with bolts by the look of it. I can't get the socket into the heads because how tight it is. Now normally I'd use a box spanner for that but unfortunately the box spanner won't fit in that gap. One thing I learned quite a long time ago was always keep tools, doesn't matter how awful or old they are. I mean over the years I've got some brand new sets and what have you and this little socket set I was given here was almost came out of a Christmas cracker. It was awful, it had a uh, plastic handle um, that fitted this quarter drive socket set and I was going to throw it in the bin. It was it was a gift that somebody who was a non-mechanic gave me. Thought, oh, Graham could use that. He's a mechanic. The handle broke as soon as time, first time I tried it. Um, but fortunately, that little socket does fit. So even though I've got an extensive set of sockets <coughs> for Whitworth, AF, Metric, and all different ones, that one actually fits. So that's the one I can use, which is great. So I'll just whip these all off. Not different size on the front. Just a bit disconcerting. Right, I'll have to go and find another socket to fit that one unfortunately. Well, as it turns out, this is actually loose anyway, so I might have to put a stud in there and fix that typical but uh, you've got to be suspicious when parts have been substituted and it really annoys me because this bike was supposed to have been restored by a professional restorer and you get the distinct impression it's been done to a price rather than to a standard it's just out of order anyway I shall continue it might appear that I'm not following the pattern for pulling this cover down. Normally you'd go cross and cross and take them a time, but <clears throat> as I often find with these restorations, that the bolts are never fully tightened up. And I think people are scared are so scared of stripping threads that they don't pull them down tight enough. And I have noticed on the other side there is a slight weep out of this cover. But uh, there you go. As for those um, bolts that fitted in there and there, I'll forgive him a little bit because apparently the threads are still correct. Um, 3 16 width with spanner fits both the nut and that bolt that went in. So, mm, okay, maybe the studs have been removed and that's just been replaced with the bolt. I'm going to check first of all on the parts guide whether they should actually be studs or bolts be interesting to find out but all of these have been insufficiently titled and tightened up in my opinion <coughs> I mean you don't even have to crack them it's just unreal <laughs> hmm 
Mm, maybe it was on Oven site, but it uh, makes you wonder. And I'm certainly going to go round with a spanner set and tighten everything up uh, before I start riding the bike once I get it going properly. I've done about 100 miles since I bought it and it was so, so hard to get started that uh, it's been stood in the garage for a year not doing much while I get on with my other projects anyway that's that and that's off good <coughs> careful that the gasket doesn't tear as I take this off. Yeah, it's not on time. <coughs> okay. Everything looks like it should be in there. The next thing I'd do is bring the engine around to top dead. Um, and at some point one of the valves will be open, such that one. <coughs> That's the exhaust on the right hand cylinder. And the inlet. So my next job is to find the right spanners to adjust these tappets and do that with my feeler gauge. So on this particular model um, you set the right hand exhaust to fully compressed to do the left hand exhaust valve. So I'm just going to turn this round until the valve is fully compressed. There we go. And this one should be loose. Which it is. So that gap there should be, I think, 10,000, but I'll just check this specification. So with a feeler gauge, find me 10,000. Well, that's nice and convenient on this uh, set of feeler gauges, they put a brass one in. <laughs> so that should go in there, and it should be a nice tight fit, just a pull fit. Mm. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Yep, so that valve clearance is correct. So I'll just go around and do the same thing on the other side. Now the same thing with the inlap valve. When the right, sorry, the left hand cylinder is fully compressed, or rather the spring is fully compressed on the inlet valve, the other side should be loose, which it is, and I can just tell by how much movement there is there that that, yeah, you can drive a bus through there. So that is probably getting on for 15,000 instead of eight. So that is significant. I'll just check the other side as well before I start adjusting them. So I've done the same thing. I've made sure that this spring is compressed on the right hand, and I can just see that that is just miles out, that one inlet valve Phew, it's supposed to be eight and I bet I could get a 15 in there so whether that's just been badly done or didn't know the spec or it's changed I don't know but that needs to be sorted so while I find the right spanners um, to adjust them oh. hmm so that's the first thing I found that's way out so what you have here is a locking nut and the tappet nut itself so slacken that off wind that down to get the correct gap which is where you get this sort of drag on your feeler gauge so that's now at eight thou which is where it should be so the idea is you hold the locking nut <coughs> at the top in position and tighten down with your spanner. So
so that's in the right position tighten down this locking nut should end up with an out end up with an <coughs> eight thou gap Just check that. Yeah, that's lovely. So that is now an eighth thou gap. So I'll just go around and do the other side, and we're all good to go. Yeah, you can just feel it sometimes. While I've got the feeler gauges out, I might as well check the plug gaps. The general principle is the bigger the gap, the bigger the spark but um, the spec on this seems to be quite wide 20 to 25 thou so I'll see what they've come from the factory at and take it from there for those super observant of you you might notice that my feeler gauges are not the trusty ones I mentioned before um, I trapped myself to some new ones these are great because they've got metric and they've got Imperial on the same piece so I like that so I bought them they're only cheap so yeah the uh, plug from that one that spark plug from the factory is set at 25 thou so I'm going to go with that <coughs> and the other one that's considerably bigger so I'll close that down to 25 okay so I've given it a very light tap and that's closed it to 25 it was probably only just above that um, <coughs> when you come to widening the gaps on spark plugs it's important to use the correct tool there's no good using a screwdriver um, wedging it in there there is a proper tool that, that pulls that um, curved bit of the metal away from the electrode in the middle because if you break the insulator in the inside that plugs US so these are NGK B8ES which are the NGK specification one that I managed to get and I shall try those at the 25 thou to start with um, I could always back it off or rather than tighten them up to 20 if I have to later so that's all the valves done that's the gapping done now I'm going to move on to just checking my ignition to make sure that um, my ignition is in exactly the right place. I will be running a compression test later on so I'm going to leave the spark plugs out for now until I've done that job. There's something really peculiar I've just noticed. <laughs> I can't believe that head didn't leak. The washers are actually on the studs that is really weird I mean there was a tiny weep out of there but I mean that should have wept like bilio anyway they should not be there all four of them really odd All I can guess is that they were put on there for safekeeping at a previous point when this uh, rocker cover has been taken off. But then you'd think they would know to put them back on again with washers. Why would you put them on without washers? Obviously that bit's not been done. I think he's probably forgotten. So let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Just a case of putting the gasket back on. This looks like it could be impregnated or possibly even rubber but uh, I've put some extra grease on it just to make sure it goes on and seals properly make sure that sits down in place I imagine it's an aftermarket one it does stick out quite a lot Ooh, I could always give that a bit of a hand polish. Do you know what? I think I will. So for now, that is that bit done. I'm going to go and polish this. I've actually put a video on um, 
my channel about how to hand polish things I find it quite therapeutic rather than using the machine so I'm going to take that back up to being absolutely brilliant uh, and super shiny and while I'll do that I'll keep the top of this engine protected with a cloth and then the next stage is as I say to check the ignition timing and then we'll have a go at the fuel with a remote petrol tank and if all that fails I think I'll be buying some new GP carbs well not maybe not GP maybe the uh, proper amyl concentric ones okay on to the next bit 